I've always been amazed, you know, all the newspaper management around the world, they saw the internet coming and said, oh, what an interesting train. Instead of saying, oh, how are we going to get on this train, you know? Um, I, I just want to make that point to you because it, it is very serious in our budgeting, for example. And there are certain stories I would like to go on, but certainly it would be too expensive. This game of 50-50 journalism. Okay, that's all right covering a football match. We give equal space to, equal, to each side. It's okay for covering a public inquiry um, into financial misdemeanors in Dublin. <laughs> you talk to both sets of lawyers. But the Middle East is not a football match. It is a bloody tragedy. And one group of people are being occupied by another group of people. That is not about left and right. It's about massive injustice. And I think that journalists should be neutral and unbiased on the side of those who suffer. talking about the Middle East or anywhere else, but in general terms, I do think there's been a division between uh, left and right, uh, albeit that it's cloudy at times and you know, mentioned the way it is used in the media. You know, well, you know, the media and newspapers use all sorts of things sort of in unscientific ways, and you know, it, it, it use them in a biased way, I mean, sort of, phrases like left and right can mean anything that you want it to mean. To me, sort of, it refers to, you know, one's attitude uh, to the system of economic organisation where it was dominated the globe and that is to say the capitalist system based upon a competitive drive to accumulate sort of in the private ownership of property. It seems to me sort of that a lot of the problems of the world can be traced down, sort of a traced back. If you grow down through them, that's what you come up against. Now, I'm not saying that in a simplistic way, sort of, that you could say they're the left position and they're the right position, but sort of the categories, it seems to me, do have real meaning in the modern world. People are sympathetic to one or the other. It prevents the public from having thought. Uh, this is a left argument, I'm inclined to agree with that. That's a right argument, I'm inclined to agree with that. It's like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. It, it doesn't give people the opportunity to think that the language of politics at the moment, as I see it, is more one of rhetoric. People try and make people agree with something, or having faith in this person who's listening to me be able to make up for their own mind what I think the reality is. Would you defend the French left in Manhattan at the moment? I don't know I feel. By all means, try and look in the North as well, on the Northern paper. Um, or for the BBC in the North, or just for a local station, like in Derry, for example, where you'll learn more about what it's like to have deadlines, those horrible things that we curse in journalism, because the clock ticks on and you've got to write. You can't say, can I have till tomorrow? Actually, I did say that to my paper this week, but I won't admit that now. There you go. Any advice? Well, I will say I win on some of those, because I don't blog, I don't do Twitter, I don't do Facebook, I don't do any of those things. And uh, I, I may be wrong about this, sort of maybe self-regarding, but I think I'm as well informed as the people I see around me who spend half their lives sort of on Facebook and Twitter and all the rest, but nothing beats sort of an old typewriter. And I wish I could still use an old typewriter, but you have to use, yeah, I love, I love, sort of, I love the clack, 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 sort of the old typewriters and computers and all that, you know, I'm not entirely convinced they're gonna catch on. You know, the laptops mimic the typewriter. What do you think CC means? It means carbon copy, doesn't it? We have two more questions. Second last. I, uh, a question about the Israeli situation. So, do you think at the time we're at the moment that there's any possibility that peaceful protests could actually deliver results? The Palestinians went to the International Court in The Hague over the wall. By a large majority, the court said the wall was illegal. Nothing happened. Nothing happened, exactly. Yeah, that was a peaceful protest, wasn't it? J Tom Friedman, the frontier of international journalism in the United States, he keeps saying, why don't they try things like Gandhi did? But it doesn't work. It doesn't work either. Yeah, Gandhi would have gone to the International Court. I'm not saying I want the Palestinians to be violent, no. But I think things are going out of our control now. Our Western advice is not going to be listened to as it was before. That's the point. Final question. To both of you, do you... Oh, hi. Uh, both of you, do you think you're the last of a dying breed? dying breed.
Oh, not again. <laughs> there are more journalists in the world today than ever before. You know, it, and it's not just Europe. I mean, Pakistan has good newspapers. I go and see their journalists before I see anybody else in Pakistan. Um, Afghanistan now has 14 TV channels, some of which are quite good. Um, India has quite good papers, not as good as Pakistan. I know the Indians wouldn't like to me say that. Malaysia has terrible newspapers, including the News Straits Times, because I had to read it for a week the other day when I was there. Um, no, it, we're not the end of a dying breed. I, I do feel upset very often when I find journalists, particularly television journalists, um, turning up in places where they simply don't know the background. That's why I like Al Jazeera. They know the story, they can see what they like, and they usually get it right. Well, don't mention, no, you can mention Bahrain on Al Jazeera English, but not on Al Jazeera Arabic, that's the problem. Yeah, I, I do think that the world is full, sort of, of very decent and uh, talented uh, and truthful journalists. I mean, uh, uh, they may find it very difficult to get... And very brave ones in Russia. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, sort of a, a, a old girl in my own trade, sort of too many, uh, I got a, a sort of tributes. But uh, I think that it's my experience, and I'm by no means absolutely sort of no means as well-traveled as Robert and going into places sort of where you have to depend on local people to try and find out a, a, what is happening, sort of a bit of knowledge before you go you go there. Is that and in my experience, sort of even by working by phone, sort of, what you have to do is talk to local journalists, talk to them, the overwhelming majority of them, you will find, are truthful people, even sort of on outlets, which don't allow them to tell the full truth, where they are uh, a actively based. They're also, almost all journalists I've ever met, are very generous sort of with their time and their knowledge and their information and all the rest of it. I think that there's loads sort of a brilliant journalist in existence now and coming along and uh, and we're all in their debt sort then of. Tell, tell us about the Derry Journal. <laughs> Well, they, <laughs> well, they, well, they, well they, I, don't, I don't have unscripted admiration for everybody who has ever worked eh, for the for the journey. I'd experienced what that way, 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 way back at the very beginning of the civil rights movement. Depending on where you begin sort of your history, a lot of people will begin it on October the 5th, 1968, when there was a march in Derry which was battened off the street by the RUC, etc., etc., and then the issue became the RUC rather than the demands uh, of the march. Now, I think I can say that I had a little to do, you know, I, I had a little involvement, sort of, in the organisation of October the 5th and uh, on the day. And I, the, the Tuesday, the Tuesday's journal was the one that came out afterwards, and I discovered when I went through it, and I didn't figure at all. I didn't figure at all in relation to this march. And many people who have nothing to do with it did. And let me just tell you who they are. Who are uh, uh, these people? They all were people who might have been described of a moderate disposition. They really sort of weren't uh, threatening. And you could see sort of the reorganization of the truth, if I can put it like that, already in place, sort of within days uh, a, of an event happening. Now, the reason I remember that one, sort of, is that it, uh, I was involved in it, obviously. But I think that's, you know, that wasn't done by journalists. And I knew I checked it out. I was a bit angry about it, so what the hell do you think you are doing? And of course, it wasn't done by journalists. Or anything. And you, 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 not to, sort of, there are rotten journalists as well. There are lives and there are people sort of whose sole source of information there is the state. Most crime correspondents have got one source of information, and that's the cops. So sort of, they can't see anything again. You've never seen a police brutality story broken by the crime correspondent of a newspaper, as far as I know, and that's because they need them and they need one another. Most crime stories in some of our tabloid newspapers and people have become national figures uh, 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 on the basis of it basis of it are people who are relaying information which the cops want to get out into the public arena. It's not done by assiduous digging. So you get a variation of course and some are more trustworthy than others but basically I think that journalism, whatever about newspapers, whatever about the media, the corporate media as we call it, journalism is in a healthy state sort of and uh, a long may it continue. But I love it. I think it's a great trade altogether. You know sort of and I think I think journalism is terrific. So, ladies and gentlemen of the flat day, can you give it up for Robert Fisk and Eamon Cannon?